The federal government of Nigeria has announced the lifting of the ban on religious gatherings in the country. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force, Boss Mustafa, made the announcement on Monday stating that the president had approved the recommendations made and that the implementation would follow over the next four weeks, spanning 2nd to 29th of June. Included in the recommendations for implementations are the ease of restriction on places of worship. The government also relaxed the existing nationwide curfew in the country to 10 p.m. from 10 p.m. to 4 p.m. Still with us in the studio is Achike Chude, public affairs analyst and author. Thank you very much for staying with us. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Religious centers and the controversy around its reopening. We do know that there are churches that are not big, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, mushroom churches that might not have the facilities or the ability to ensure all the guidelines are stated. What are your thoughts about this? Well, I think it's about safety. And um, I think there is general consensus between both uh, the, I mean, those in government and then uh, affected organizations in this instance, churches and mosques and religious institutions that there is a need to ensure that uh, the right thing is done to protect uh, the safety of uh, people, of uh, citizens, and then the uh, safety of uh, worshippers. And I think that that is very clear. So um, uh, again, one other thing that is clear is the fact that uh, churches and mosques are not being targeted, and that uh, what is going on is uh, not discriminatory. There is a consensus that uh, something needs to be done, and so there is that agreement. Uh, now, eventually, it's going to open. Uh, if, if you look at I mean, what's going on all over the world, Europe, the United States, and everybody's talking about the need to also ease up because people have to get back to, 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 I mean, to their normal life. Way of uh, life. Because the economic implications of not doing that were, could also be very severe. And so I think it's about the kind of protocols that, that are decided upon. It is about the kind of safety measures that are put in place. Well, at, at this stage, you want to believe that the Lagos state government, for instance, is acting in the best interest of the citizens of the state. And there are even some church people too, and, and maybe uh, religious li leaders from the mosque. T -t Talking about church yeah. people, we were joined uh, virtually um, by Elevation Church Pastor Tunji Iola. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. All right. Um, you, you just had Achike um, share his thought on the, you know, the ease of lockdown, especially and the um, lifting of the restriction for the places of worship. What is your position on the matter. Okay, um, so thank you once again. Um, now, we, we all know um, that basically from all that we have been told uh, by the experts and also um, based on common sense, right, um, that the safest place for each person to be um, in this season is in their homes, right? Um, and that's on one extreme of the spectrum, okay? Um, but when government says that um, I mean, churches and places of worship can now open and meet, right? Um, I mean, we all understand that there are fears around oh, when people congregate in large numbers, okay? Um, what is the potential thing that could happen? I mean, it could heighten the spread of the diseases, right? Um, but one thing we also need to understand is that there is a wide spectrum of organizations um, and religious worship centers, you know, that have um, different capabilities, okay? Um, some have no capabilities at all, all right, to be able to enforce, to hold services um, in an atmosphere that is contactless, um, where they are able to enforce um, social distancing rules, okay? Um, but there are some who have those capabilities, all right? So, so what needs to happen is to have a lot of sensitization um, and say to people, you need to be careful if you choose to go to a place of worship, to go and worship, right? Um, so, so for example, um, I'm aware of, of churches where um, committees have been set up, you know, with very senior people um, having conversations around what needs to be done if uh, fiscal worships, you know, were to resume. Um, I, I do know, you know, that Lagos State Government right now has said um, that churches and mosques will not reopen in Lagos State for, for, for until, a, until a while longer, right? Um, and I think that's a good decision. You know, it keeps people safer for much longer. It gives um, religious centers, churches especially, and mosques, right, um, also some more time to prepare to be able to open, um, to hold services um, in a safe manner, in a way that is as safe for people as, as possible. 
Uh, Pastor Tunji, regulation is an issue, isn't it? Uh, because who, these churches, like you said, there's a wide spectrum of people and, you know, associations that go with it, including uh, for the other religion. Whose responsibility should it be to ensure that there is some level of compliance? Should we make the decision to go ahead uh, with uh, services? All right. Um, I think there are three layers of, of responsibility, right, in this in this decision making um, and for enforcing law and order, right. Um, so the first one, you know, the, like the presidential task force said, um, the, the state government, right, need to provide guidelines and frameworks, all right, for resumption, the things that uh, must clearly happen, this and they has also been need done to be already. able to. Um, to monitor adherence, all right, and compliance, they need to be able to monitor compliance, right? So there is a responsibility on the government. Then there is a responsibility on the churches themselves, right? The leaders of the churches to create a, a very safe atmosphere. In fact, to make decisions that say things like, if we're unable to make people safe, when they come for worship services, we're not going to open. But we are also going to do our best possible, right? Um, and do everything within humanly possible to make sure that if we're bringing people to church, um, we want them to be as safe as possible. We can provide a safe environment, right? And then, of course, there is the responsibility on individuals as well for their own personal safety, okay? So I'll give you an example. Um, um, in the last 12 hours there about, in the last 24 hours, right, in our church, um, we, we, we did, we've done two things, basically. So number one, um, we, we came up with a communicate. We came up with a letter that we sent to everybody who's on our database, you know, outlining our position and our thoughts and the things that we're going to do, you know, to be able to arrive at a decision whether to open or not. And if, if and when we choose to open, we outline things that we're going to do to keep people safe, right? Um, so, for example, there will be no children's church services, right? Um, right? And, of course, what we have also then done is to is to do a survey. We've opened a survey um, um, to, to church members and non-church members asking for their input in this decision-making, right? Uh, so, so there are some church organizations that are that detailed and resourced, you know, to, to be able to make those kind of decisions. And there are others, you know, that may not be at that level. So, so like I said, three levels of responsibility. Government provides frameworks. Churches provide um, safe environments, make decisions with utmost responsibility. And, of course, individuals as well, all right, to take their own exercise due judgment and sound judgment in making decisions whether to go out and physically worship with All other right, people Pastor. in, in uh, church yeah. locations. I, I wish we had more time so you could uh, expand a little more, but thank you very much for the insight you've provided this morning. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right, um, in, to wrap up this conversation quickly, three layers of responsibility. Doesn't that give room for excuses, really? Shouldn't we have specifics for different segments? No, no, it, it does not. I mean, if, if we have a um, uh, sufficient uh, level of uh, interaction or synergy between these layers of, uh, you know, to ensure compliance, then I think it should work. It should to, to be seamless. And that means engagement between the government and then uh, the churches, the leadership, the leadership of the churches. Once that happens, then I, I would expect that um, things will move much better. But without, uh, you, I mean, you talked about uh, those, some of those churches that are not exactly well structured. The very, very smaller churches who might find it difficult to operate under this kind of mandate. That is where my worry actually lies. For the bigger, more organized churches, I think it is easier to police them. It is easier for them to police themselves and ensure that they are in compliance. All right. Thank you very much yes, uh, you. for your thoughts so far.